Hello everybody. We're going to look at something fun and delicious today. It's ramen noodle soup. And this little presentation is called The Roots of Ramen, where we are going to uncover past and present history about ramen from all over Japan. The Origins of Ramen Ramen was born when the Chinese noodle dish came to Japan and fused with Japanese cuisine, combining noodles, soup stock, sauce, other ingredients, and fat or oil. Now noodles in Japan are called men, soup stock is called dashi, and the sauce is called tare. There are limitless recipes that include variations in style and flavor, such as soy sauce ramen, miso ramen, salty ramen, pork bone ramen, and dipping ramen. Each region in Japan also has its own local style of ramen that reflects the climate, environment, and cuisine of the area. With its unique evolution in Japan, ramen has now crossed the seas and become a popular dish throughout the world. The roots of ramen can be found in Chinese noodles. There are records in Japan dating back to the 15th century that kaitai men was eaten. And kaitai men is a type of noodle. Okay, it's a noodle made from almost the same recipe today that they used back then. Okay, but the people back then didn't really eat this ramen soup, the common people people that had probably a lot more money were eating ramen in the 15th century. In 1858, Japan opened up after 200 years of being shut off to the outside world. They signed trade agreements with various foreign countries and began opening their ports the following year. This brought an influx of foreign cuisine from abroad and Chinese noodle dishes started to spread throughout Japan. Before 1858, they didn't let anyone, any foreigners, go inside Japan. And they didn't let people leave either, probably. The birth of the ramen shop. In 1870, the first Chinese restaurant opened in Yokohama. Chinese cuisine had existed for many years as a high-class cuisine featuring a main course. But with an increase in students coming to Japan from China during the latter half of the Meiji period, there was a growth in the number of Chinese restaurants. It was then that the first ramen shop, Rai Raiken, opened up in the Asakusa neighborhood of Tokyo in 1910 and it featured ramen as a fusion of Chinese noodles and Japanese cuisine. Raiken was a huge success, and it served 3,000 bowls a day on busy days. When they say the latter half of the Meiji period, what they mean is the second half of the 1800s. And they said in 1870, this restaurant opened, and that's what they mean. The influence of Yatai. With the great Kanto earthquake in 1923, Tokyo and Yokohama, where so many ramen shops had set up, they suffered serious damage. Since the earthquake, the number of Yatai, which are street stalls, they increased because they were easier to open than a brick and mortar restaurant. It was easier to build and work from this little pull cart than it was to build a whole restaurant. So these yatai were different from other shops on the street and in order to reduce the number of items on their menus, most yatai proceeded to sell only ramen. Most ramen shops had to shut down when the Second World War began in 1939, but there was another increase in the number of yatai again after the war as people returned from China. The five main elements of ramen. 
Ramen does not have to be a single recipe, but it is instead born from an almost limitless number of variations through the combination of five main ingredients. Noodles, soup stock, sauce, other ingredients, and fat or oil. Men, which are noodles. Noodles are characterized by how they are made. They could be hand-churned, they might be straight, they might be curly. It might be the type of wheat that they use. It might be the thickness, the amount of water, and the shape, all of which can be changed to create an original ramen noodle. In this picture, you see chijiri ramen, which are curly noodles. Soup stock. Soup stock in Japanese is called dashi. Dashi is formed as a combination of meat, seafood ingredients, and vegetables, and the choices and the amounts of which make a dashi unique. So, it's a combination of pork and chicken, konbu, which is seaweed, and these dried sardines, and then garlic and onions, that kind of thing. When you put that all together and simmer it, you make a soup stock. The sauce. Sauce in Japan is called tare, and the soup is what the flavor is added to. So tare is created by condensed extract from meat or fish and spices. Common kinds include shoyu dare, shio dare, and miso dare. The soup is made by combining tare with the dashi. So we take a soup stock, which is called dashi, and we add the sauce, which is tare, and that creates the unique soup. Fat and oil. This is the one flavor that ramen cannot do without. There is animal fat, vegetable oil, and seasoning oil. The oil forms a skin on top of the soup and keeps the ramen from cooling. A lot of oil and fat in your soup makes it taste delicious. When they say seasoning oil, they might mean, for example, sesame oil, something that has a flavor. This is Kasuaka ramen. Pick your ingredients. There is no set list of ingredients, but standards include roasted pork filet, menma, spring onions, okay, nori, which is seaweed, cloud ear mushrooms, which are these right over here, uh, bean sprouts and spinach, okay, and egg, okay, meat, leeks, mitsuba, corn, and cubed meat. Lots of different ingredients that you can put in your ramen soup. Pick your sauce. There's so many ways to classify the different types of ramen. Ramen can be grouped by the sauce, for example, such as shoyu dare, shio ramen, and miso ramen. So you can call different ramen soups different names that come from the kind of sauce you're using. Pick your soup. This is tonkatsu soup, which is pork bone broth. Ramen can be classified by the type of soup. Common examples include pork bone ramen, where the pork bones are boiled until they appear cloudy, like you see in this picture. Chicken bone ramen, prepared in the same way, but with chicken bones, and seafood ramen containing a large amount of seafood. Stock is made from bones. We'll learn more about that later. Another pick your style. Ramen that can't be classified uh, by the sauce or the soup can be grouped by the style. There is ramen that comes with the noodle separate from the tare called dipping ramen. Ramen without soup called mazemen, and ramen popular in the summertime called hiyashi chuka. 
many different shops specialize in different styles. So you might just get these noodles and dip them in a dipping sauce. Find your local ramen. Japan is an island nation spanning a large area from north to south and thus has varying seasons, climates, and topography that impact the cuisine and local cooking. Okay? Way up north in Japan, it's cold. So they're going to have different ingredients that they have down south. Down south, it's hot. So they're going to have different ingredients than they have up north. If they live in the mountains, different ingredients there. You live on the ocean, different ingredients there. So you can see how where you live, the regional differences, um, will tell you the kind of ingredients that the local people will put in their ramen soup. Okay, go tochi ramen means local ramen. The kind of ramen they make in the town you're visiting. The different types of local ramen are featured in Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum. Each region of Japan also has its own ramen-themed amusement park where visitors can experience each regional variety of ramen without needing to cross the country by train or airplane. You can just go to the Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum and taste ramen from all over Japan. Sounds like a fun amusement park. And here's a picture. So this is the museum and these are not real storefronts. They're inside a building. You can see this has a roof, a ceiling. It's not the sky. And you sort of pretend you're in a town and you're going to all these different little ramen restaurants. Sapporo Ramen. Born from the cold winters of Hokkaido, Sapporo Ramen has a thick broth with vegetable and garlic extract. This ramen warms you from the inside. Ingredients such as chuka, nabe, and bean sprouts are fried up in a pan into which the soup is poured to create a single broth. Moderately thick noodles are used that are slightly curly. Hakodate Ramen Hakodate is, a relatively war is relatively warm for Hokkaido. Hokkaido is the island in the northern part of Japan. That's the name of the island, Hokkaido. And the ramen here is a simple salty ramen, which is called shio ramen. It features roasted pork filet, menma, and shredded spring onions as ingredients, as well as a clear soup and moderately thin straight noodles. These characteristics make Hakodate ramen similar to what was originally brought from China. Miso ramen. Invented by the ramen shop Ryu Shanghai in Akayu Yamagata Prefecture, that's the place. This was the first miso ramen in Honshu. Now I know that some of these ingredients the names you've heard for the first time here today. This is miso. Miso is a fermented bean paste. It's salty, has a strong umami savory flavor, and it's very good in the soup. So when they make this ramen soup, they take a, a ball of this miso and put it on top. It's made with chili peppers, and they put it in the bowl, and customers will mix it into their soup bit by bit uh, to their taste. So if I were to stir this whole miso up in this bowl, it would become quite salty. But I could only mix up half of it and it would be half as salty. I think you know what I'm talking about. Yokohama ramen. Flavored with soy sauce soup, much like the noodle cuisine originally brought from China, the evolution of Yokohama ramen has followed a unique path. This combination of thick pork bone and soy sauce with thick noodles has come to be a style referred to as kakai. Kakei. In recent years, a name popular used instead of calling it Yokohama ramen. It's called kakei. 
Kyoto ramen. Kyoto cuisine is generally known for being only lightly flavored, but the ramen here, are here actually has a strong taste. The soup uses pork or chicken base, and although it can largely be divided into three lineages, all of those lineages have a noticeably rich flavor. And what they mean by that is it's divided into three types. That when they say lineage in this case, they mean different types of soup. Tokushima ramen. Tokushima is a region with three different kinds of soup. Instead of roasted pork filet, the most popular ramen here has a salty sweet ingredient made by cooking boneless rib and features a raw egg topping. The noodles that are used are short and soft and only slightly curled. Hakata ramen. Hakata is the main city that represents Kyushu region. The ramen has a soup made by boiling pork bones for a long time and uses straight noodles with little water added. Locals are very proud of their ramen's popularity throughout Japan. After eating the noodles, customers can order kedama, which is a second serving of noodles that can be added to the remaining broth. Okay, so picture yourself eating this bowl of soup. You ate all of the noodles and all of the ingredients, but you still have some delicious broth left. You just order a side of kedama and put those noodles right in your bowl and keep going. And that's it, my friends. That's the end of our little tour of the history of ramen. We'll look at more fun, interesting things about ramen in the future. And we'll try to look at the ramen museum.